Hi everybody, this is Joe with Joe's Premium Firewood, bringing another fun-filled, exciting video. Today's video, I'm gonna show you what the best use of a Fisker's hookeroon is, or what I have found the best use of it for. I made a video when I first got it back in the last summer, but I wasn't sure. I was trying to pick them up and sure how exactly to use it. Well, I'm gonna show you how I do that. Before I go, get that, get to that, this right here, I just went over to Herb's Landing and bought all these oak blocks. There's uh, one cherry, two cherry blocks in there, I think, maybe three. So I just went over there, bought this right after my delivery, and I'm gonna show you how I use it. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna give you an aerial view. So let me hook this up to the tripod and we'll get her done. So here we go. I think you can see that should be a good angle. Let me get it tight so it don't fall out of here. I think that's good. So if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I make all firewood related videos. I have two firewood channels. This one is Joe's Firewood Videos 2. The other one is Joe's Firewood Videos. If you like what you see on both channels, I would appreciate you subscribing. And if you're a regular here, welcome back guys. You know the drill. We're gonna get stuff done. I don't play games. And uh, like I say, I I've got this, I've got this tool here that the Fisker's hooker room that I'm going to use what I use it for basically is to help me get these logs or blocks out of my truck. Now, where did I set my darn gloves? Don't tell me to put them in the truck. Uh, yep. I'm out, I was just about out of this oak. It's what I call semi season. The way I've been shipping it out, if you watch some of my older videos, is I put ash in the front of my truck and then I put oak here in the back this stuff some of it's ready especially towards the, towards the bark but the center pieces especially on the bigger pieces need more time to dry so right now i don't i don't need it for this, this row on the back but i'll show you how, how i normally do it oh and if you're wondering why i'm wearing the same clothes as i did on the video that i published on wednesday because today is Wednesday. I'm just not gonna publish it. I don't know, you'll either see it Thursday or Saturday morning, I haven't decided yet. But sometimes I make two videos in one day, but instead of re, uh, releasing them both on the same day, I spread it out so you can see a video every day. But normally I only do anyway from one to five videos a week on this channel, and then the other channel I usually do one or two videos like this, and then I do a Sunday morning live stream <clears throat> somewhere between 9 and 11 a.m. Eastern time. I don't have a set time because I got to set everything up. I don't know what the weather is going to be like and I don't know what my schedule is going to be like. So I can't just pick a time because I'm basically working and talking to the camera. That's how I do those. So let me get, get this unloaded. <coughs> I, I had to load all this by hand by myself. Herb helped me load a couple of them. I would say these are here about 50 pounds each, but that one, that one was probably a close to 100 pounds. And, uh, and you might wonder why I took the tailgate off because it's so tipped and loose because the, this is spread apart farther. It tends to pop off when it's down. When it's closed, it stays in place. But when it's down, it pops off here. If I roll them on here, I don't want them dropping on me. I had one fall off when I was loading. So I just took it off because it's real easy to get off. But I like uh, I like putting these smaller ones down towards the bottom. When I stack them and then put the bigger ones so I don't have to bend all the way over to pick up the bigger ones when I go to split them. And right now my splitter, the splitter's in the shop getting the bracket replaced and an oil change. So that's why I'm not splitting them right out of the truck. Plus the guy I delivered to today wants some oak. 
he's gonna buy a new rack and then he can dry this and then just burn the other stuff. So I might be splitting this right back into the truck, but I gotta get it out first before I can do that. Cause I know a lot of you guys say, well, why don't you just split it out of the truck? Well, that's why. It's a mix of red and uh, white oak. And yeah, a couple pieces have some fungus on it. No big deal, nobody cares. It's good in solid wood. All right, let's get to these big ones. This one, might, maybe it's not 100, it's probably at least 80 though. Ugh, at least, maybe 100, because that's oak. And then this is cherry. And it ain't, it ain't light either. Okay. So they, these are the ones I can reach. And then instead of doing this, because you know my back problems, I take this, pull it off. Just like that. a good swing it locks into there real well I'm gonna have to set an end piece turn it sideways so they don't roll down this hill I've found them down there before when Mike's unloaded Herb's got everything all cut up in massive piles and they range anything from about eight, 10 inches to like over three foot in diameter. So I had to scavenge around. It took me about a half hour to load this because I had to find the right size pieces. Just makes it easier getting it on the end and then just I can roll it off. Put it on here. <laughs> Works pretty good. And yes, I had one of my loyal subscribers donate that to me. I hadn't used it until I started buying these blocks off of Herb. You know, I can I could kind of reach that roll, but this is a roll that really helps. See how easy that was? I'm getting from that side first because I'm kind of at an angle here because I do a lot of splitting right there and it's kind of filled up, filled up a lot of debris there and it's made a hill basically. But it just gives you that extra, you know, 30 inch reach. Hey, I said, you, you know, that means Pam needs to take a shot of Pendleton. Pam the ball buster. You don't have to look very hard. You'll see her comments. About one out of every 20 is positive.
but she's not a hater. I guess uh, it's going to get real cold next week. Here it is, mid-January. No snow on the ground. It's about 40 degrees. I wish it was just a little bit colder to keep the ground frozen. I don't like dealing with the mud. I don't think anybody does. Well, you get it in there good, it don't want to come out. Want to go too high and have this fall over, so I started that second row. Now, in this last row, I really can't reach, so a couple of these. This piece of cherry, I'll just have to grab, you know, I can grab from here. But I can, you know, I can use this too. So, the shot, Pam. Get them move forward so I can uh, reach them with this or just re generally reach them. Well made tool. I don't see where it says made in China on it. So a lot of people were saying that. I thought they were made in Finland. About time to dump this debris though. Maybe after tomorrow's uh, delivery to the campground. I guess if I really lean forward, I could reach them. But that's without the tailgate on here. So that does help too, because normally with the tailgate out here, there's no way I'm reaching those. Oh, some little dirty, it's a mud pit over there. Pieces are on the bottom were just covered in dirt, but it doesn't matter now because they don't have to be cut. <sighs> this sure is a hell of a lot faster. And walking back and forth and rolling to the back by hand. They're climbing up there, you can't throw them out because they're going to roll down that hill. Last one. Oh. 
sip of this. That's how you use a Fis Fisker's hookaroon. And thanks again, Dan, for getting it for me. Really appreciate it. Why don't you guys check out some of these videos on the end screen for those of you that made it to the end. I don't want to mention names because a lot of you guys do. Just some names are easier to remember than others. All right, I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you guys at the next one.